So if you have 200 horsepower in your leg, what remains in the brain? More or less, more or less nothing. And everything which is uh, built somewhere by people came from where? From? Perfect. Perfect. If you have mud in your brain, you build cities for mud. If you have the car in your brain, you build an environment and a city for cars. And your mental mobility is going close to zero. And this is exactly what happened in the last 200 years because uh, our society, like me, uh, were in the, in the 60s of the last century, were extremely impressed about the power we got and the speed we accessed with, the, with our cars. So the car slipped in our brain. The car is like a virus and change our behavior, our system of values, and from the brain, it forms our worldview. We don't see the world anymore like humans. We see the world like the car would like to see it. And this is exactly what you have seen outside. Because everything you have seen outside made from men came from the brain. And in this brain, in the lowest level of your human brain sits the car. And controls human thinking, human talking, design, urban design, and something like that. And land use planning has done the same mistakes. They have uh, separated uh, urban functions, which are close to have been close together for 10,000 years. A city is a place where you cannot separate uh, functions because working, uh, leisure, teaching, social contacts, human development is happening at the same place. Public space is a very precious uh, part of the body of an urban uh, system, and we have uh, destroyed this public space by building carriageways. So the question uh, I have to give you is the solution is not in the transport sy system. You cannot find a, the solution in the transport system. The solution you find if you remove the car out of the body. So you get a healthy body if you remove the virus out of your body. This doesn't mean there's, that there are no virus at all there, but the amount of viruses should not control the working mechanism of the cell. So each cell has to keep its body clean from the maximum of viruses. So the number of viruses, it means the number of cars has to be removed out of the city. If you make, a urban, if you make urban planning and you think about a city where there are no cars there, what do you have to do? You have to walk, but how do you have to s design the city? The functions of the city must be multifunctional. What is the most precious level of the buildings in such a city? The ground level, yes. The ground level, and if you look to the ground level of the cities of today, they are boring. You have entrances for garages, uh, banks have hard surfaces, they are not friendly to the people, they don't invite the people, so they get totally other urban design, first of all. The second one, people like to get in contact more or less every day with what, beside other people, with what else, with the nature. So you have to bring the nature back into the city. And uh, one of my friends who has died already, uh, Professor Reiner, has written a book in 1948 uh, about uh, urban planning. And he said, you shouldn't make uh, houses higher than the trees growing in this area. This has some reasons, because uh, the trees provide the environment with a good climate, local climate. They provide shadow, and if you use the right kind of trees, then you have the shadow in the summertime, like today, as uh, it has been in China. You have mentioned before Beijing. I was in Beijing before uh, the Hudongs were moved, removed or removed by uh, caterpillars, uh, and uh, they had this wonderful climate situation there with the trees between four of these buildings and then the th trees along the roads, and it was very easy to cycle there. Today it is a nightmare to go there. 
uh, and the cycling was very easy. Today is not possible anymore. So the cycling, uh, as much as we know, is uh, not replacing uh, pedest uh, pedestrian traffic. It is, a, it is adding uh, some advantages to the pedestrian uh, movements for longer distance and public transport is also an urban agreeable uh, transport system. What will remain in the future? Do you think the people will, will be more mobile in the future? You think yes? Trips. But more trips? Well, as much as we know uh, from historical data and our own data, we have uh, analyzed millions of data, the number of trips is constant in the society. The average number of trips globally is about four trips per day a per, uh, for a person. It changed over, over, over the lifetime. Uh, and the second one, do you think if we drive faster or move faster, we can save time in the system? Travel time is a constant. Travel time is an abs absolute constant, so if we want to have uh, a carbon-free uh, future, we have to reduce the travel time to what level? Through the carbon-free modes. And the carbon-free modes are electric modes. Mental mobility is electric-driven. And physical mobility is also electric driven. This is the answer. And as soon as you leave this, uh, exceed these borders to, to an amount which is not uh, healthy anymore, you are losing uh, a carbon free uh, access to the city. The question is what uh, does it mean for us? We are losing power, of course. We are losing power. If we don't have the car, we are losing power. Or are we gaining power? Imagine, imagine if, if you live somewhere and you have no car, you have no carbon energy source which is abundant and, and cheap, easy accessible, do you get power or do you losing power? Of course, in our system, we are losing power. But if you build a city, as the question I have to answer here, what happens in this case? You must have all the shops around you, and the shops will be small. You will have, to, you will have a lot of social contacts. You, don't, you are not dependent on, on, um, on anonymous uh, social societies and something like that. So uh, you are gaining power. People and society is gaining power. Because as soon as you are sitting in the, in the car, you give your power to whom? Yes, perfect. <laughs> so you are a slave of the car and oil industry, and following, you are a slave, a slave by the corporations. So this is uh, I, what, what I can recommend. And when you find partners in the administration and in politics, you can do it. I am doing it since... 40 years. And this, uh, what I am observing, the people are much more happy about it, what is coming out. So you have to think about the children. Would you like to have your children in such an environment as this future has shown before? Would you like to grow up in the future before, from the 1939? You? No. We have to go back to our human scale. We have no other scale. And uh, I have some, like, uh, some small criticism about using the word. We don't have to re-engineer. Engineers are not able to do the change. Because engineers can build complicated systems, but they don't understand complex systems. I have studied some engineering disciplines, but I have studied other, other disciplines too. And <laughs> 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 
engineering is a special kind of disciplines. Engineers are the people who are using natural laws without understanding what the, the limits are and how to use them in a careful way. This is a better explanation. Yeah, this, this uh, engineers are good to, for simple things when a, something has been, a physical structure has been demolished and <laughs> you need the engineers. But what, what we, uh, for this uh, business, we need much more the feeling of designers. Uh, this is not only rational way, this is also some art and uh, having a feeling of the society and uh, of the heart and something like that. This is what the scale where we measure is are the people. Where the people go, the environment is nice. And if you go into a city, you have just to look around. If you have no people on the street, the city is dead. People on the street are like the pulse of a living body. And if there is no pulse, the pulse is a daily pulse. Today you have more people, in the night you have less people, and this is the daily pulse of a city. And we have killed the cities. Instead of blood, lifeblood of the cities, we have carbon fuel and noise. Okay? You are not happy, huh? Excuse me. Um, we have like a, something like 10 minutes for the lecture okay. parts and then like five minutes for interaction uh, because we really want to open up also to, to questions and it's, I'm just I, putting it into this direction now because I see that's already going into the question bit. I think it's a, a very interesting perspective to, to see it in this way and also uh, your experience of also being instrumental for transforming parts of Vienna. Um, for all the ones who don't know it, Professor Knopfler was very involved in the, in the pedestrianization of, uh, of central Vienna uh, in, in the 70s. Um, I think it's fair to say that w without your work it wouldn't have been possible back then. Um, it was before my time, so I didn't, cannot be a, like a real-time witness. But um, so, so that's also why we wanted to have you here, because you saw and you uh, instigated such a change already. You know what? Um, so I wanted to ask you guys if you have uh, certain questions or comments or remarks. I'm also the mic guy, by the way. Somebody? Anybody? Yeah, the, these are the two legs. <laughs> yeah, but the legs are the two legs. Yes, uh, you are absolutely right. So it is uh, important uh, to have everything you need between A and B. And if you go to C, it should be different. Then it is interesting. You become curious. The environment you, we have today, whether I'm in the States or uh, in, in China or in Thailand, it looks everywhere the same. So the question is, why should they go there? But if you have a, a, small, a s slow system, then you have local uh, optimization, local culture, local typical situations. And this is what you see still in Vienna and all the old parts, which has uh, not been removed during the last 50 years. So freedom is only walking on your own. If you want to have the freedom paid by others, then you can use the car. But you, then you have not understood what means freedom. This is something <coughs> very deep to think of. I think it's uh, very, when you so say, oh, okay, let's design mobility. You, it's, it, many people don't relate it to such questions, but I think it's also, you know, there's something like ethics to mobility systems, what you use um, as well, uh, just reflected in this question. We have another question here. Just a question that uh, in history, you know, we 
walked around and collected uh, uh, food, and we settled down, and then uh, we started to, to, to ride on horses, go by bike and so on, ride, ride cars, and we always increased the range. So we went to the moon, we went, we, we went to the to other, uh, uh, we always expanded. Is it controversial to the thinking of how we move in future cities? I, the question is uh, whether where this uh, development, in what direction this development will end. And we know today where it will end. It was shown before, we will run out of, of space, mainly of space. We will run out of uh, capacity of the nature to compensate all our, our, our nonsense and what the chemical and engineering arts and uh, things has been uh, rele released uh, to, the, to the environment. This will be the bad things. At the moment, we are still on the better, better side. Uh, but if you go in other countries like India or even China, then you see the, other, the end of, 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 this, of this stick. And uh, in this case, I think uh, we have to go back to the human scale. We have no other choice. We have been so arrogant that we think we are superhumans. Because when we move a car, we are really superhumans because nobody can move 50 kilometers or 100 kilometers an hour. But with the car, we have the impression. But we forget that the whole society and the future had to pay for our kind of this kind of behavior. We are captured at the moment in the system. So it is not uh, useful to point somebody with a, on the f with a finger that you are using the car. Everybody today, most of the people have the feeling they must use the car because they have not a choice. Well, I think uh, the adventure and to discover something is not outside. It is inside. <laughs> this is the unlimited uh, adventure area and not outside. Because when we are, uh, well, it is not interesting anymore to go to Bali today. It's not anymore too interesting to go to Italy. Uh, when you have, uh, well, I, I don't need to go so far because I have uh, experienced uh, in my professional career, uh, the world rather well. And I am totally depressed when I see after, after 10, 15 years how many cultures have disappeared. If you are traveling around the globe today, you don't see very much anymore. Because most of the really interesting and different things have disappeared everywhere. Uh, they have disappeared here too. Uh, we have uh, ruined all the, the uh, local cultures more or less everywhere. Uh, but the problem is we can adapt to a very poor environment and think there's still some difference there because we don't need the, the real opportunities we would have if we have uh, been able to preserve these uh, structures. This is the problem. We have to build up it again. OK, let me interrupt here for one last question. Um, by. Hi. Uh, since we're talking about a very specific location as Vienna, and we maybe all know Vienna rather well, and you've been involved this for your whole career, what is like your very personal things you would change, or you would want to be Vienna looking like in 2030 maybe? What is like the most urgent things or the most visionary things you would, based on what you know, wish to well, see? Well, I think uh, Vienna should speed up in the, in the process which has started uh, about 40 years ago. Uh, I was able to pedestrianize the city center in 68 to 72. Then in 75, I made the uh, cycle planning in Vienna because Vienna was not thinking about cycling, cycling at this time. Cycling and cycle was not a word in the master plan there. It didn't exi exist at all. So you see today we have some cycling there. <coughs> uh, but what I would uh, recommend uh, to, well, first of all, we should prevent the projects uh, from the past. There are uh, some uh, city endangering projects at the moment from the typical transport engineers building motorways and something, uh, something around Vienna and in the city too. Uh, this should be prevented, first of all. And the second one, we should remove the cars from the historical part. So there are more, more or less all the districts 
We can remove in, in Vienna very easily uh, the cars. Uh, this doesn't mean 100%, but 95% of the person cars can be removed. And uh, we would have the same quality of life. We would have the same opportunities for mobility. We would have a much better environmental and social uh, con uh, context. And we would have much more local shops and uh, much more employment. Because car is one of the most uh, effective destroyer of uh, human employment. We have analyzed the difference between uh, shopping centers and Vienna shops in the streets for the same profile of goods, uh, for the same turn, uh, turnover. Uh, in the city shops in Vienna, there are about five times more people employed compared to, uh, compared to the shopping centers. So we have a structural unemployment for young and old people and we have isolation of people and if you change it in this way, you, you get the Vienna, which is close to the uh, Vienna in the 50s of the last century, but with a new approach. We cannot uh, go back. This is nonsense, absolutely nonsense. We have to choose what we have to take uh, uh, with us in the future. And it, uh, I think the Vienna future will be interesting when the children are not interesting to, uh, to uh, look to the iPhones, but they hear their friends crying from outside of the window. And they say, oh, I am going to play something on the street. And this is, I think, uh, an interesting future, also for the old people. And then you don't have all these uh, uh, problems uh, of the urban uh, extension and something like that, what we are doing today. So the Vienna would be, the city of Vienna would be compact. It would be a healthy body, like this body is also very compact, and hopefully mine too, <laughs> still for some time. Uh, and uh, this is a healthy body. Uh, the question is, what is, uh, w do we have to do with the car? He mentioned already that the young people are already going away from the cars. I know it from Japan, from 2008, where the young Japanese people haven't used anymore so many cars as before, haven't bought them and had no driver license anymore. And Nissan invited me to give a lecture for the, for the, for the uh, management there. Uh, with the, the lecture title was Car Free City. And this was Nissan, and I think Nissan is not uh, building watches, it's building cars. And they have recognized what will, will be the future, and I think Vienna is, is not a problem. We have, we have such a good public transport, uh, and if we, if we keep on public transport, cycling and, and walking, and we have some car traffic. And the car tra traffic we need is for delivery, for handicapped people, uh, car is nothing else than an artificial limb, nothing else. And some people who are interested or they, are, they think their personality is depending on the, on the car they have, they can store the cars outside of the city in one of the garages and uh, show everybody how his uh, baby is looking like when he put it with a video camera on his iPhone and show him, yes, I have a Mercedes or whatever, I don't know what are the kind of cars because the people don't carry the children with them, which would be much better, instead of carrying the car with them. So they should carry the children with them and show the pictures of the car. Yeah, thank you very much. Let's give Professor Knopfler a, a good hand for coming by such a hot day. Thank you, thank you very much. Okay.